Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is me, I am Tung, and today we are going to do another editing video and how I took this picture from this to this. And you guys already saw this image from this past Sunday's video. It was with me uh, going out with shooting with Nicole in the Toronto suburbs with the XS10 and the, the new Fujifilm XF 23mm f1.4. I just want to talk about this uh, edit that I did and we're just gonna get right into it. First off, I used the Provia standard for this one. I find that it brings out the most color uh, in a photo and that's something that I really like. It's something that is like punchy but not too punchy like Velvia. It's not muted like a classic chrome. It's just like a very good better than standard uh, picture profile from Adobe Color. That's what you get and then to a Provia standard. So it just makes everything just look a lot better with that on. So again, th this is why I like Fujifilm so much because this film simulation. Film simulations are a game changer. Whether you use it as a straight out of a, of a camera JPEG or use it as a base in your Lightroom uh, raws like it just makes your photo look so much better when you use it don't leave it as adobe color or as adobe standard try using one of these film simulations because your photos are gonna look fucking amazing uh the reason why i chose uh provia is because obviously nicole she has red hair we want to bring that out and she also has pretty eyes and you can see she has like piercing blue eyes here and it's like and also because of the the background the background we're in, we have a lot of you know lawns and greens that which I don't like. These houses right here, you know, these like red brick houses that just, you know, it's there for the color pop. And then we also have this like magenta uh, tree right here, and I think that was uh, one of the cherry blossoms tree. This is what I kind of wanted. I just want to bring everything to life. The first thing I did was warm warm it up. This is what she had before. This is where it was before. And it didn't look that good. So I warmed it up because again, I, I want to bring uh, some warmth. I wanted to show that it was a nice sunny day. And I did my basic exposure right here. You can take a look at that. Not This is what it looks like before. Everything was evenly balanced before. If you take a look at the before, everything just looks very boring. But I wanted to add my flavor and the color green, especially in Toronto, it just reminds me of the suburbs. Um, you know, backyards, lawns, always reminded of just backyards and lawns. And that's the reason why I don't like the color green, especially in Ontario. And then I did my usual S curve. This is what it looks like before. The RGB uh, curved channel is a little bit more advanced. I won't go into full detail of what I did here because you know it takes uh, some time getting used to, but if you know how to use it, it's, it's like a very powerful tool. So I'm just gonna show you here like what I did. So if I just reset this channel just for fun, it's, it, it has the colors, but it looks a little bit dull. So I'm just gonna go back and control that. And um, this is what I usually do if I'm like really working on a photo and trying to bring the photo alive with colors and to add, to whether add more blues into the shadows or to like take out reds in the highlights, etc. It's like, there's so much you can do with it. And again, these are just my tone curves right here. You can see that I'm lifting up the shadows here. Like some people won't notice the difference of what it is, but then like with all these subtle changes that you do, it just adds up and it just makes the photo so much better. I'm, I'm gonna turn off the tone curves again and you're gonna, you're, you're gonna see how much of a difference it makes just by adjusting the curves. So this is with it on and this is with it off. It still feels a little bit flat. It's not, it doesn't feel like it has enough contrast, barely any life to it. So that's why when you do this, it adds a little bit more life to it. Cool. And after that is my HSO. I already told you guys my philosophy on the last editing video I did 
uh, with Jack Ross. I'll link that video up here somewhere if you guys want to see that. You see the green is slide all the way to the left because again, I hate the color green. But let's see what it looks like at zero. You see at zero, you know, I feel like the green just takes away from the photo. It looks too distracting for me with all the elements that are going on, especially with her as a subject. I want her, I want the eyes to be drawn to her. So what I had to do was just drag it all the way to the left, just so that the green's not there. It looks a little bit less distracting um, to the viewers, for the viewers. Since I hate the color green, I desaturate the green. I took away a minus 42 of it, and this looks a lot better to me. And from there, I just added a little bit of orange to the shadows and orange to the highlights again. I'm going for that summery, that warmth vibe. It's crazy what you can do with color, man. Just with like color theory and stuff, you can really affect people's mood just by playing with colors. So remember that. And I'll show you what it looks like without the color grade. This is what it looks like. Again, a little bit dull, a little bit flat with it on. Every, like, you know, you see more vibrant, you see more warmth into the photos and that's what we want. And finally, my my sharpening leave the mask to 75 i just don't want any of this in the background to be sharpened just her make the photo nice and crispy and i shot this at f14 and it's crazy how sharp this thing is at f1.4 man like holy shit look at that and she her eyes in focus look at those eyes man Always change, always enable profile corrections, especially your lens profile corrections. If you turn it off, you can see that <laughs> the X20, the 23 millimeter suffers from uh, heavy, dist uh, heavy vignetting if you don't correct it and a little bit of distortion. So always turn it on so you can stretch it out and this is what it looks like. And after that, I play with the calibrations to make the color pop a little bit more. Always around minus blue 11 to 15, go like plus 10, uh, plus 11 for the green hue. And if you turn it on and off, you see again, uh, she looks a little bit yellow, right? It doesn't, the skin tone doesn't look right. It, look, it looks very sickly, but with this, you know, added some red into her face so it just looks a little bit a little bit healthy <laughs> she doesn't look as sick usually after this is done i would go into like skin retouching but skin retouching is just like a separate video on its own it's just super advanced and usually i don't want to teach that because like better people out there that can teach skin retouching than i can teach skin retouching and they can explain it a little bit better but from there I take it into Photoshop and I skin retouch and I add like a, maybe a little bit like a final curves adjustment and then I should get something that looks like this right here. So you see that I removed some of the hair strains already. I'm not going to remove everything because you need it to look natural. Uh, and then I just clean up her face a little bit. Any like unevenness, I just clean up and it looks like that. So you get something. That looks like this from this. Sometimes shooting film recipes are like super fun and you know, it makes for easier work in post-processing because you can just edit a JPEG. But I find that that's not enough to make you stand out. For, for some people, shooting JPEGs and shooting film recipes are just fine, but for for someone like me, you know, I am I would say that I am an artistic person. I like to be different. I like I like to have a, a signature look. When someone looks at my photos, they re instantly knows that it's mine. And that's where editing raw raw comes in. You know, you are able to have your own style, like, you know, color graded to you the way you want and not and you're not restrained from the camera doing the processing for you when you shoot uh, film recipes and you're only using JPEGs. There's a lot of other people who would use the same recipe I would use, can take the same image and get the same look. So it's harder to stand out in that way. So for me, shooting raw can give me the competitive edge and competitive advantage that I need to have my photos stand out 
even more. Uh, hopefully you guys took something from this video. Uh, if anything, you can shoot both, but keep your raws and, you know, always practice editing your raws. I would say edit your photos every day until you get like really, really good right keep doing it rinse and repeat and that's how you're gonna get better uh there you have it hope you guys learned something from this video if you did let me know in the comments below doing editing videos don't really perform well on my youtube channel but i just i just throw it in here for you guys sometimes like i really don't know how to teach you guys i can i can only share you share share you guys my thought process on it it's up to you and your vision and how you want to see things, right? Um, I can only show you, I can only share my process and hopefully you can take those little nuggets that I, that I try to explain to you and try to apply it on your photography, in your photography journey. But yeah, again, let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Should I do more of this? This is something you guys like. And if I do more of this, can you guys watch them? <laughs> Yeah, don't forget to follow me on my social media. That's where you're gonna see more of my work at I am Tung. Um, once again, my name is Tung, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Okay, bye. It's five o'clock here, and I should be going to sleep. But after this, cheers.